This is Pond Boss. Tell me Tips what for to do. Fisheries to Pro. make all Three. my Lunker Lake dreams come true. Chico, my longtime friend, how you doing, buddy? It's it's a beautiful day, man. I'm having a blast doing this. <laughs> I'm moving around. This is really place. fun, you know. It really today, is. Today we got to go on a road trip and go meet with a client and try to figure out his goals and, and aspirations with this property. And he's pretty much got a blank pallet. Now somebody's kind of carved on that pallet a little bit with some heavy equipment. And he's going to need to change that some. But I thought this podcast we ought to give some tips for the fisheries professionals out there because there's a lot of young folks. When I first started. Basically, in Texas, where, where I live, there were three of us that started about the wow. same time. Right. And there were a couple of uh, parks and wildlife biologists that were moonlighting, doing some pond management, mostly for club lakes around Texas. But now there's, according to the uh, Texas A&M Fisheries Extension Service, there's like 140 companies just in Texas. And in Texas, really? when I first I started... Know. Yeah, yeah. And now they're not all fisheries managers. You know, some of them manage golf course ponds. Some of them take care of urban waters, you know, dipping out trash and building fountains and things right. like that. So so I thought today we'd talk more about, about fisheries pros and some of the things that they need to think about. You know, I've, I've been able to make my living and have a really good time working with landowners to create the best fishing lakes that we can create. And that's just so much fun. And over the years, one of the tips I want to give you is get to know your client. If you'll spend time and listen and hear what they've got to say, you're going to get some insight as to how you can be successful with that client. Uh, Like one of the questions I ask all the time is, why did you buy this place? Tell me, what is it about it that attracted you to buy it? And then what are your goals? What's the mission? You know, and a lot of times... A new landowner that's not done this before, they don't really know their goals. They haven't really voiced them or thought about them. They kind of have a vision in their mind. It might be the first time they've really had to put it to words. Yeah, Yeah. and they oftentimes they don't know how to do it because they've not done it. And one thing to remember is your clients don't know what they don't know. And you're the pro, so you get to convey that information. So uh, get inside the head of your clients and understand the mission. Understand how they think. It's and a lot of times I'll talk to the husband and the wife. Most of the time the husband, most of the time the husband calls me, but you better believe that if his wife don't like that place, she ain't going. <laughs> Greetings, Bob Lusk here, editor of Pond Boss Magazine and longtime fisheries biologist. Welcome to the Pond Boss Podcast Series. Got some great topics lined up for you. Glad you're coming along. We are brought to you by Purina Mills, makers of Aquamax Fish Foods. Texas Hunter Products, makers of fantastic fish feeders and other hunting products, Easy Docs, and HuntBirdDog.com. We're glad you're here. Let's go have some fun together and get our learning curve up, you know? (laughs) And so spend time understanding what makes her tick as well and what she sees in this property as well. And vice versa, sometimes... I've had a couple of occasions where the wife picked out the ranch and she saw things she wanted to do. Sure. And then the yeah. husband, you know, well, you know, well, let's make a. There, there's a big decision maker over there. That's You've huge. You've got to consider it all the That's time. That's exactly right. Yeah. And they're a team, yeah. you know, and so you need to treat them as a team. Um, and I, I like to tell fisheries pros to act with compassion and empathy. Don't expect them to get into your head. You get into their head. Yeah. One of my favorite questions after asking why'd you buy this place is tell me about you. What's your background? Yeah. You know, how'd you get from where you are to, or I mean, where you were to where you are? You know, or is that is he a CD, CEO? Um, was he, did he start in the drafting room and end up running the engineering firm? You know, so is he worked as a plumber his entire life? The more you can learn how they think, the easier it is that you're going to have to be able to build them a game plan, first of all, that they'll believe in, and secondly, that they can accomplish with your help. Uh, And look for the little things. Like when I first pull in the gate of a property, I'm looking right there. You know, if you pull into a a gate, it's an electric gate, it opens, you know, you got the code, you punch it in, it opens, and it's a paved road that meanders up the hillside, and you're going 
between some lines of trees and and all the trees have been trimmed about tractor head high. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. It's true. You know, when the lawn is manicured all yeah. the way up there up, that tells you something. But if you pull in and it's it's a it's a it's a muddy road and you know they're new into the thing and they haven't you know there's we sat six feet tall all the way around you. Make sure you put the chain back. That's <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. If you open a gate, shut it. You know, so look for the little things. That's going to help give you some insight as to how people think. Next. After you figure out the goals and you learn a little bit about how they think, one of the things you want to do is help them create a game plan to get them from where they are to where they want to be. Now, here's what that means. Here's the goals. So next, you got to evaluate and find out where they are. And it's not, it's not only about what to do with the fishery. You know, you need to understand the ecology of the mission and the ecology of the resource. The economy along with it, yeah. The economy often makes a big difference. Now, you know, if somebody can afford the land and they're bringing you out there, here's another tip. This is a real important tip. You know how much you pay for a loaf of bread if you're a fisheries pro. That landowner, on the other hand, may not know how much they pay for the bread, but what they know is if they like it, they're going to buy it again. <laughs> so don't let your value system interfere with your recommendations to that client because that client's going to have a little bit different set of values than you do. You know, it doesn't mean that they're better or worse or anything. It just means they've got different values. So don't, don't get sucked into the vortex of sticking your values into somebody else's head. Empathize with theirs and learn what theirs are. And yeah, you're gonna... listen, you're a good listener. I noticed that, that you really take that time to, and repeat it back. Let me make sure that I'm that I'm reading. I do that so, every time. You do, yeah. Here, here's Sometimes twice, like today, a couple of times you go back right. to, let's make sure we're in, on the same page. That's right. That's and you right. use that, you say. And, what, and one of my phrases that I've just kind of embedded in my brain is, here's what I think I just heard you say, and then I'll say it. And if I got it right, they'll smile like you're doing right now, and they'll nod their head and say, yeah, you got it. That's it. That's it. So now we haven't even talked about fish. <laughs> So the next thing is you get to evaluate uh, their resources. Now, here's what that means to me. It's not just the lake. It's the water. And, of course, now, anybody that watches my podcast or listens to me talk knows I have got five fundamental tenets, and they're in this order. And when I'm evaluating a lake and its fishery, I'm looking at these five things. Does it have happy water? Does it have the right kind of habitat for all the different species and different size classes of those species? Is the food chain correct? And if part of the goal is to grow some big fish, then we need to talk about genetics. And then a pond or lake is like a garden. There's got to be a harvest plan. And so you get to help figure out those things. And if something's missing, it's, on, it's incumbent on you to help figure out what's missing. You know, you can try to money whip a crowded bass lake all you want. But it's going to be a crowded bass lake unless you do something different. You know, you can go spend ten grand on bait fish to feed a crowded bass lake, but until you figure out what's the problem, then you're not going to make much good headway. And you're all you're going to do is prop it up. So the next thing you do is you go in there and you evaluate the fishery. You evaluate the big five things that I just mentioned. And then it's time to write a report. Well, we're all tempted to create a template. And most of the bigger companies have a template where if they're going to recommend bluegill, then they've got a paragraph and pictures of bluegill. And it kind of funnels to that. Yeah, and so they take that template and then modify it as briefly as they can to that client where I don't like that. I mean, I don't mind the template, but you need you need to... You know, I have read a number of reports from clients that have said, hey, would you come back and review these reports? And for five years in a row, it's the same template with a little bit different recommendations. So I like to write my reports and make them personal to that client. Now, if I think I need to use information about bluegills, I'll do that, you know, or Florida bass or whatever it is. But you can bet there's going to be a couple of pages, especially the cover page, the first couple of pages, or I'm writing directly to that client. So here's my tip. Learn how to become a writer. 
That's a big deal. Express your needs. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And you, if you can't express your findings and express your recommendations, mm -hmm. spell it right, you know, have the right grammar, odds begin to decrease in your favor <laughs> that you're going to land that client and be able to make them happy. Yeah. So writing's important. Oh, by the way, we're going to evaluate the fishery. Do a thorough job on that. It's one of the things is... Uh, that I've had a hard time over, over the years with guys that I've hired is to make sure that they're collecting enough of the right data. There was, I remember sending a young biologist out one time, Chico, and, and he came back, gave me his data. I didn't get to go on that electrofishing survey. And I started reading the data and I said, wait, well, hey, aren't there gizzards shed in that lake? Oh yeah. I forgot to put that on there. Well, that's, that's important. Yeah. That's real important. Yeah. You know, if there's gizzard shad in there, that's going to influence the recommendations that mm -hmm. we make. So be thorough with your reports. Have a summary page. The summary page at the end of your template, or however you do it, in that summary page, direct it specifically toward that client in that lake. If you do all these things and bring these things together and work with that client and empathize, you're going to have a happier client. Oh, by the way... Then you get to do the fun things like weigh and measure fish and then come up with a corrective stocking plan or ways to enhance the productivity of the lake or improve the habitat that's, that's you know, fill in the gaps of what's missing. And you can do those things. Mm -hmm. So there's a handful of tips for the fisheries pros. If you want to learn a little bit more about these topics, you can go to palmboss.com. Heck, subscribe to Palm Balls Magazine. There it is, 35 bucks a year. Like I tell people on my Facebook live broadcast, it's cheaper than a Friday night date, and it lasts a year, 35 bucks. So uh, so there you go. So, hey, Chico, that's kind of, you got any parting thoughts there? No, I think it's good. I, I find it really interesting that most everything that's good for the customer is really good for a professional, too. Exactly. They kind of move along the same lines. It's how you uh, um, listen. I think it's listening skills and opening up and being a team. Yes. Getting together on things. I think that's the hard part. Yes. And when you're looking for somebody, that's real important. And remember, you're trying to help people make a dream come yeah, true. It's big. That makes you pretty important, yeah. you know, in their eyes. And if you approach it like you're trying to help them make a dream come true, then your success rate's going to go up and you're building a relationship. And that relationship, if you make that client happy, he's going to tell his friends who's going to tell their friends and you're going to start to build a business. So, hey, we're going to run out of time here. Let's kind of wrap this one up. Thanks for listening. Thanks for stopping by, and uh, we'll see you on the next podcast. Wow, that was pretty fun, huh? I'm so glad that you joined us. Say, if you're looking for more information, I want you to head over to pondboss.com. We've got all kinds of cool information and been there forever. It's got some of the best articles, topics, got uh, Ask the Boss discussion forum. And be sure to check out the Institute of Higher Pondology online as well. And subscribe to Palm Boss Magazine. That's what fuels the economy of what we're doing to help us put these shows on. So until next time, we'll see you then. Hey, Mr. Pond Boss, tell me what to do to make all my Lunker Lake dreams come true.